Hello, welcome to my review of Grapple Dog, a brand new indie 2D platformer with incredible gameplay mechanics and fantastic 2D pixel art graphics. The game was made by Joseph Gribben using Game Maker Studio 2, something that I've played around with myself in the past, so it's been really interesting to play a full game that's been made using that game engine. I was given a review code by Super Rare Originals for this review, but I have to say that they have not looked at this before it's gone live, but I want to make it clear that all opinions are my my own and I do have some constructive criticism about the game which I really hope the developer will take on board and use to make even better games in the future. 2D platformers with interesting mechanics are some of my all-time favourite games, so does Grapple Dog live up to the lofty expectations that I've got? Let's find out. So with my reviews from now on, I'm going to be looking at five key categories and rating each one out of 10 to come to an overall score. So unlike most review sites where a seven or an eight is considered good, I'm really going to try and stick to the fact that five is the standard for a game and anything above that is excellent and anything below that needs improvement. So with that said, let's get started with the first category that I'm going to be looking at, which is the gameplay. So the game begins with you going through a tutorial stage to get used to the game's mechanics. You accidentally reawaken an evil robot and from there your adventure through the worlds of the game begins. The controls are super simple and intuitive. You can shoot the grapple hook by pressing Y and you can press up and down to move up and down the rope to swing from side to side to gain momentum and jump off at just the right time. This is basically it for the main mechanic. I really love the simplicity of its execution and it genuinely feels really great to just swing around these levels. It doesn't really have the same amount of skill or possibilities as something like the Umihara Kawase series, but it is definitely a lot easier and much better as an introduction to the grapple mechanic than those games. You can really get the hang of it almost straight away. Aside from the grapple mechanic, there's also a few other really cool gameplay features, including the ability to do a drop ground pound type move which can be used to break open boxes, attack enemies, or later on solve specific puzzles as well, such as flipping over these bouncy crabs. There's also a dash that you can do in water, sort of like Echo the Dolphin, where you can aim out of the top of a water bubble and shoot yourself into the sky in order to reach the next grapple point. That's a really fun mechanic. There's also Donkey Kong style cannons that fire you out. There's also a few different ways of attacking the enemies too. You can either jump on them when you're doing a rolling spin, sort of like Sonic or Pluck, or you can grapple onto them while they're in the air. One issue I have with the controls though is the fact that sometimes it's kind of hard to position yourself after you've gone into a jump, which makes some of the more precise platforming a little bit frustrating. Basically, once you start rolling in the air, there's a little bit of momentum that carries on either left or right, depending on which way you originally started your jump. So you don't have full control over where you're going to land. It really is only a small nitpick though, and everything else about the controls is spot on. There's also another really cool little technique that I found out that really helps with the time trial stages later in the game. So you can actually shoot your grapple hook while you're in the air and doing so allows you to actually float for just a little bit before you land on the ground again. I used this to my advantage several times during the time trials and the bonus stages, which I'll touch on later on in this review. So that was a brief overview of the game controls, but what do you actually do in the game? Let's take a look at the structure. So there's six worlds in the game and within each world, there's five main levels, a boss stage and several bonus areas as well. To progress through the game, you have to find a certain amount of purple gems hidden within the main stages. These range from easy to find to incredibly frustrating to acquire. Usually they're just off the main path or hidden behind fake walls. And there's an additional two gems that you can get by collecting enough oranges, or at least I think they're oranges. In some levels, there's also a hidden blue B icon as well, which unlocks one of the bonus levels on the overworld. The bonus stages consist of challenging linear levels, which are really fun to try and get through. And there's also levels where you have to collect a certain number of purple shards within a very strict time limit. I really enjoyed both of these styles of stages and they definitely helped to break up some of the bigger main areas. To progress through the worlds though, you'll need to collect a certain amount of the purple gems. This does mean that sometimes you'll be going back and forwards through the same levels over and over again in order to try and find more. Overall, I do like this approach to level design and progression, but there are some annoying situations where you can get blocked off in a stage and you're actually unable to go back through the level and to try and find the gems without actually starting it all the way over from the 
beginning, and some of the levels can be quite long, taking upwards of 5 minutes to complete. So I did end up getting slightly frustrated at some levels where you'd get blocked off and there was no way to actually backtrack without starting it all the way again from the beginning. This could have easily been fixed by giving you a way to loop back to the start of the stage when you reach the end. As the levels go on, you're also introduced to a lot more different level mechanics which help keep the game fresh and exciting. Some examples of what to expect are crumbling blocks that fall apart after a certain amount of time swinging from them, green platforms which only stay active after a certain amount of time after ringing a bell, there's also swinging platforms to grapple onto, different types of bouncy floor which can be used to your advantage, moving walls to hold onto, grass that you can climb up, and lots lots more as well. The boss fights on the other hand though are a mixed bag. The first few are very easy and it's just a case of waiting for the right moment when you're able to attack, but they do pick up later on, but the final few fights in particular are especially exhilarating and rewarding to beat. Like I said, some of the stages do get very long later on into the game and this is kind of at odds with the fast paced nature of the gameplay. They can sometimes feel a little bit repetitive, especially with the repeating level gimmicks which really don't change in difficulty within the levels themselves. Overall though, the levels and the progression system the bonus stages, it's all really fun and well designed, and that's why I'm giving gameplay a very solid 8 out of 10. Now, the next category is graphics, and as you can see, the graphics are just incredible in this game. I really, really love the style they went for in this one. They're definitely my favourite part of the whole package. The style's reminiscent of some of the best 16 and 32 bit games with big, thick borders around the sprites. Some examples that come to mind are the Denki games on the Game Boy Advance. If you haven't heard of them, they're games like Denki Blocks or Go Go Beckham Adventure on Soccer Island, which is one of my favourite platformers on the system, and I would love to do a video on that at some point. Other games with cute sprites and heavy outlines like Yoshi's Island, Pluck, Kirby's Fun Pack and even Doremi Fantasy all come to mind when I'm looking at this game. In short, I absolutely love it. All of the other characters and environments all fit with this style really well too. The stage themes are all kind of generic though, although they are nice and colourful and coherent, which is the main thing. There's also a good amount of NPC characters, some of which reside inside your ship on the world map, as well as a few characters that you can actually interact with within the levels themselves. There's also some really nice looking cutscenes to help push the simple but fun story forward throughout the game. The writing is actually quite witty and it never overstays its welcome. Overall, as I said, the graphics are a definite highlight of the game for me, and I'm going to give them a 9 out of 10. Now, audio, and honestly, I feel a little bit conflicted about this one. While the compositions are really fun and catchy, I don't actually feel like they fit in with the game itself. The world map music was great, and it reminded me of the hub worlds from something like Spyro the Dragon. But when you start a stage, the style of music changed completely. I was expecting some chiptune music to match the amazing graphic style, but instead the game had a kind of Hideki Nagamura style soundtrack, similar to things such as Jet Set Radio or Sonic Rush, which are great games and a great style of music in their own right, but I really don't think they fit the kind of gameplay and graphics that this game was going for. They are really good compositions though, and I definitely had the theme from the first world stuck in my head for days after playing this, but it does all feel a little bit out of place with the graphics. The sound effects are really good though, and the cute noises that the characters make when they talk are really fun and give the game a lot more character. So overall, while I do like the soundtrack, I don't really feel like it belongs in this game, which makes me feel a little bit conflicted about this one, because I do really enjoy listening to it, so I think I'm going to give the audio a 7 out of 10. Now, unfortunately, the next category is technical, and I say unfortunately because this is kind of where the game drops the ball for me just a little bit. So, for the technical prowess of the game, I am reviewing the Switch version here, so it might be different on other consoles or on PC, but on the Switch, there was some quite terrible frame rate issues, especially in some of the later stages when there's multiple things moving at once. 
And yes, I am playing this after the update on day one, which apparently fixed a lot of the frame rate issues. So I don't really know how bad it was before that, because I did actually have this game before it went live, but unfortunately I was too sick to actually play and record my review then. So that is why this video was going up a little bit later than I was hoping. But thanks to that, I am playing it with the update, which should have fixed a few issues, but I definitely found some almost game breaking problems with it. So there was a few areas which really suffered from bad frame rate. And there was a few spots of slowdown as well. But as well as that, I also encountered numerous bugs and glitches, which unfortunately made me reset the game several times. Things such as the grapple hook just getting stuck, you sort of sliding out of position, missing collision detection, level details just disappearing, getting hurt for no reason in particular, bosses breaking completely and making me reset the game from scratch, and sometimes the game just crashed on its own and I had to restart it as well and actually lost out on some progress several times. I presume most of these issues came down to the engine that the game was using and the fact that I was playing the Switch version, but I just thought that this should be something that you are aware of if you're planning on getting the game for yourselves. Don't expect it to go entirely smoothly. Although I really do hope the developer takes on some of these criticisms, takes on some of the bugs and feedback that players have been giving him, and does actually provide more updates in the future. But thankfully, the controls are really nice and responsive, and outside of these bugs and frame rate issues, the game was an absolute joy to play, and I really think he managed to squeeze the best performance he could out of the game engine itself, especially with regards to the physics. They really must have taken a long time to perfect, and he really did a fantastic job with it. So I definitely commend the developer developer for taking the time to really perfect the grapple mechanics and all of the different gimmicks within the levels themselves. Unfortunately though, because of the unavoidable frame rate problems and the numerous bugs and glitches that I encountered, I have to give the technical category overall a 6 out of 10. Now the next category is originality, and no one wants to play a game they've already played before with just a fresh coat of paint. Thankfully though, this game oozes originality. While there might have been other grapple platformers in the past, none of them have really pulled off the mechanic together in such a way as this one, with its big open levels and really smooth gameplay, feeling almost totally unique in the modern gaming landscape. Also, the really bright and colourful graphics, and the fact that it's an indie platformer that isn't scared to be linear, it's not a metroidvania, all of that comes together in such a way that there's really been nothing like it before, at least nothing as fast and fluid to play as this, and I really did enjoy it, and I really think it's one of the most unique games that I've played in a long time. And I really hope it does really well, so I hope that my video, along with the many other reviews that have come out online, really helped this game gain the traction that it really deserves. Deserves. So I'm actually going to give originality a 9 out of 10. So in conclusion, adding up my scores there and turning it into a percentage comes out as 78%. And like I said at the start, I'm actually going off the fact that a 5 or 50% should be the average for a game. So for the game to get 78% means that it is a fantastic game and you should definitely check it out for yourselves. And I know personally that a game is good when after I've done a video review on it, the first thing I want to do is go back and 100% complete it, and that is exactly what I'm going to do. So hopefully that gave you a really good idea as to what the game's about and whether you'd like to try it for yourselves. If you'd like to play some retro games that give off the same kind of vibes as this one, I've come up with a few suggestions for you. You should definitely try out games such as Pluck, the original Rayman, Yoshi's Island, of course, and of course, Umihara Kawase, which I did a full video about the entire series, which you can check out right here. I was actually really surprised to see that the developer hadn't actually played any of these games, which I actually thought would have been really big inspirations for him. Either way, it's a fantastic game. Definitely recommend checking it out. Of course, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Check out my Umihara Kawase video that I mentioned using the link right there. That's it for now. I'll see you all very soon for the next episode. Goodbye.